this week I want to talk about the topic of love and I want to talk about it in relationship to relationships and in relation to self-love and how the two work in tandem. So, but first of all, before I dive into that, I want to say thank you so much for the amazing comments that I had for last week's show because last week Danny came on the show and everybody loved, loved, loved him. And I was so happy to see that, like really, really happy because it means you all see him the way I see him. And I think that's, that's amazing. And I, I really enjoyed reading the comments. I mean, well, I got a kick out of one person's comment who said she loves Danny more than me, or Danny should run the, the, be the main face on the show. And I completely agreed with that. And Danny has vehemently said no, but you know, with a bit of coaxing, you never know but it was, um, the comments were fantastic. And I think, um, from reading the comments, one of the things I started realize, realizing is how many of you are struggling in the area of relationships. Cause that's what seemed to come out a lot in comments where people were talking about their own struggles and how they wished they had somebody understand them, um, or had a partner or a soulmate, and, you know, the way they saw Danny and I interact. So in a way that also made me feel sad that other people don't get to experience that. And, and, um, at least heartily, there were a few people that said, oh, I have a similar relationship with my partner. And those, that was really lovely. I love hearing from everybody, but I love hearing from people who say, yes, we have that kind of thing because it feels really joyful. Um, and for the people who don't or who are looking for that. I'm hoping that a couple of the things that I say in this video will help you. But I also plucked a couple of comments from people. Um, and I wanted to, I want to kick off with those comments, uh, which I didn't catch. We didn't catch during the show because we were both in front of the camera and it was hard to see the comments. Um, and they may have been posted after the show. I don't know, but I sometimes go back. In fact, every time after a show, I go back and I found these comments, um, and I found them really interesting and they were very, um, vulnerable and because they were quite, um, you know, they exposed themselves quite a lot in that comment. I've covered the name, but I do want to share them with you one at a time. Um, because I think that these questions are pretty commonly asked by many of you in the interim though, I would love for you to ask or post your questions in the comments. Um, but, but see if you can target it towards love and relationships and partnerships and that kind of thing. And Danny or Boo in the background, he will be looking for the questions and he will, and he will ask them after I just go through these first two questions, which I picked up from last week. So, um, the first one is from this woman who, um, and I will skim through it cause it's a long one, uh, where she says though, I would love to hear your feedback on self love and commitments. Both are very important to me because commitment is important to me because I try to be careful what I commit to before I say yes, checking in with myself first, which is perfect. But I do get frustrated when other people back out of their commitments at the last minute. But then I think, well, maybe they needed to in order to be loving to themselves. But it also seems like something better came up and that doesn't feel fair to the people one had originally committed to. Yes, I agree with that. I'm struggling with this in my mind. Is it okay to be backing out of a commitment when it's no longer something you want to do, but you had said yes to? I get discouraged about others doing this regularly as I feel they are unreliable and that's not good for a relationship, but I want to honor their self love choice. My brain is hurting now thinking I'd love to hear your thoughts one day. So basically, um, if I understand correctly, it's about being in a relationship. It's about self love and it's about commitments. Now there's several ways to approach this, but I completely hear you because it feels like people are committing to you and then moving on. So my sense from reading that number one, my sense from reading that is that the work that you need to do is not on your relationships, not on other people, but you need to love yourself more so that 
you will attract a higher level of commitment, but you really need to see yourself as deserving and worthy of a higher standard of commitment. So on the one hand, having said that, when you do love yourself, like it's very easy for you to say, oh, maybe they, they love themselves so much that they're honoring themselves, so I need to honor that. Yes, but the point is, do you love yourself enough that, um, that uh, to the point where you, you saw a natural break in the commitment where you both moved on feeling like, yes, this is, no, this is the direction we need to go. Um, and I hope I'm making myself clear in this because what comes across to me uh, energetically from this question is that the Oscar does not love themselves enough and are being treated a little bit like a doormat. And that's why they're feeling that way. So literally the answer to your question is that, um, is that yes, you are being treated a little bit like a doormat. You do deserve better and you do need to love yourself more. But I want to say a second piece to this is that when you do love yourself, you do have the right to choose at any point in time, but at the same time, you need to honor the person you're with. If the person truly, when you do love yourself, you attract people who love you at the same level you love yourself. And when someone loves you and when you love someone, even if you're committing, um, there needs to be an understanding that this commitment stays as long as the, the feeling, the authentic feeling is there. And yet at the same time, and you know, like when you have this kind of commitment, there is a respect and a responsibility for each other's emotions. So when you commit to someone and when someone commits to you, make sure that they honor your feelings. So just because somebody is willing to commit to you, you do not have to commit to them until you are sure that they honor your feelings. Now, honoring your feelings doesn't mean that they have to stay with you forever. But, um, you know, but at the same time, if they feel they need to break the relationship and move on and they love themselves enough to express that, they need to do it in a way that honors your feelings. That's my point. Um, I'm not saying every relationship has to last a lifetime. Relationships are different. They come and they go. But the only relationships you need to get engaged in are the ones where people honor your feelings. So even when it's time for them to go, they do it respectfully in a manner that honors your feelings. And the way to get to that point is to love yourself have a higher value for yourself, a higher standard for what you expect in a relationship. And that's extremely important. And I'm actually going to get into this a little bit more with the second question, which will bring more clarity to, to what I've just said. But in the interim, what I, the answer to you, the specific asker and anyone else who feels that people are not honoring their commitments, it's that yes, you are being treated like a doormat and yes, you need to learn to love yourself more. Um, the second question was um, a little more complex where this person was struck by my comment last week um, or Danny's comment, uh, in fact, was that he did not expect me to conform to any particular standards. Um, and he did not, uh, so after, basically after my NDE, he did not expect me to conform to the um, to to our cultural standards, and that is one of the things that really helped me to heal. So, if I really quickly read this, it seems to me that she would never have found her own voice, which is such a tremendous gift to so many. If this had not been the case, um, my biggest challenge since my journey with cancer has been my husband's ongoing running commentary about all the ways in which he sees me as not conforming with his expectations about how a wife is supposed to be or behave. It seems I, I'm in, uh, it's, I seem to be in a constant questioning as to why I continue to stay in this relationship. 
So far, my answer seems to come down to, I think my soul still has more to learn through learning not to react to a nearly continuous pushing of my trigger buttons. And um, so I don't need to get into the rest of it, but basically the asker is wondering if she still has to continue in this relationship because she has more to learn. So my response to that is that if, he, if you are feeling demeaned, if you are bending yourself out of shape like a pretzel, then no, it, it doesn't mean you have more to learn from the perspective of allowing yourself to be defeated and beaten down and unaccepted. No, what your soul has to learn is to love yourself, love yourself enough to be ready and willing to walk away from the relationship. You may or may not need to walk away, but you need to be willing to. You need to be the kind of person who is, um, who is fine and um, who is so comfortable in yourself that you don't need to be in the relationship to, uh, to complete you. Because when you need the relationship and you don't love yourself enough, then you are in prime in a prime situation to attract people who treat you like a doormat. Um, so the litmus test is that, uh, so here's the litmus test that I, when I say litmus test, the test as to whether this is the kind of relationship to stay in or to leave. At the end of the day, everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants to be accepted for who they are. And one of the things that keeps you in a relationship even when you're being treated like a doormat, is that you wonder if you need to love that person more. Do I need to love them more? Is that how they're going to change? Is that what's going to make them love me? So um, my suggestion to you, the litmus test is, when you accept them for who they are and love them for who they are, do they love you and accept you for who you are or do they still expect you to change and bend out of shape like a pretzel in order to hold on to them? That is the key. That's the only question you need to ask yourself. Because remember, everybody wants to be loved, including them, including you. So when you love them for who they are, that means they're getting, and your only job is to love them, not change them, not accommodate them, not bend yourself out of uh, shape like a pretzel. That's not your job. That's not your job. You came here to be who you are. They came here to be who they are. Your only job is to love and accept them for who they are. The question is, do they love and accept you for who you are? And if they do not, then they are not right for you. It's as simple as that. It's not your job to bend yourself out of shape like a pretzel and to be a doormat to hold on to them. And it does not mean you don't love them enough if you can't hold on to them. So you have to, that's where to draw the line. You draw the line as I love them, I accept them, um, but can they love me and accept me for who I am without me having to change? I don't expect them to change. Are they expecting me to change? So in order to meet this equation, you too must not expect them to bend out of shape like a pretzel to accommodate you. You too shouldn't expect them to change. You need to be able to love them for who they are, um, for what you see in that time that you are engaging with them or committing to them. When you make a commitment, you have to make it on the basis that they're not going to change. This is who they are. Do you love them fully? Or are you compromising? Or are you feeling, oh, this is better than nothing? That's not love. Energetically, they will feel it. That doesn't respect them. It really has to be, can I love them unconditionally for who they are? And then you have the right to also say, do they love me unconditionally for who I am? Or am I finding I'm bending out of shape to hold on to them? And if you really are loving them for who they are, but they're not loving you for who you are, and you're still feeling all the time that you have to bend yourself out of shape to hold on to them and people please them and be a doormat, then the relationship is not working for you. You need to love yourself enough to be willing to walk away. When you love yourself enough to be willing to walk away, one of two things happens. Either 
they realize suddenly that they, they do love you and they've been treating you like a doormat and they start treating you the way you deserve to be treated or they don't because they loved the doormat in which case you need to, to leave the relationship or figure out a way to leave it or start to make strides towards leaving it. I know it's not always easy because you might have kids and so on, but you need to start making strides because you need to open up that space for somebody who loves you in the way you deserve. You are not completing your soul's purpose by staying in a relationship that suppresses you, makes you a doormat and doesn't allow you to express who you are. Your soul's purpose is to express who you are. It's to express yourself and be all that you can be. That is your soul's purpose. And if you allow yourself to be in a relationship where you are downtrodden, suppressed, where you lose your voice, then you are not completing your soul's purpose. So remember that. Does your relationship allow you to express your voice or does it su suppress your voice? I get so many people saying, um, I don't know if being in this relationship is part of my soul's purpose or not. So I hope that has helped you. Does that relationship make you suppress yourself, be a doormat and not express your voice? Then you are not completing your soul's purpose. I suspect for many who need to question, who need to write in, it means that either you don't love yourself enough or that, or it's that relationship is not the one for you and it is not completing your soul's purpose. So I hope that was really helpful. And I'm going to turn to Boo right now to ask him if, um, if there are any questions on this topic that I can get into. There is a very, very interesting question. And I apologize if I pronounced your name long, but it is Limon Nada. Oh, yes, I've seen her. She's on my course as well. Uh, Limon asks, Anita, can you talk about being afraid of your own power? and how we can learn to embrace with positive results. So my guess is that being afraid of, when I say my guess, um, the way I intuit that being afraid of your own power, why would one fear their own power? I think that um, the reason one would fear their own power is because you're afraid of what that power will bring and attract, because really that's what it is. It's a fear of, Okay, what's that going to attract? So what I would say to you is that when you allow yourself to be powerful, it doesn't come all at once. Um, and when, uh, and, and the universe will not give you uh, more than you can handle, particularly when it comes to things like handling, um, handling things that come with having power, whether it means having a leadership position, whether it means having the kind of abundance that you want. Some people believe that they're not getting it, they're not getting into it because they're afraid of their own power. Um, I believe even to that the answer is really loving yourself more. But if I use myself as an example, the minute that I became unafraid of my power, which was after the near-death experience, the universe still delivered at the capacity in which I was able to receive it. It didn't give me more than I could handle. The universe still gave me um, the gifts or the, the, the reflection of my power came at a rate that I was able to handle it. So to give you an example, um, when, uh, so after I came back from the near-death experience, it was 2006, I felt incredible. I felt powerful. I felt I understood how life worked. And even though I felt powerful, one of the first things that happened to me was that I started encountering naysayers and debunkers, which kind of made me back down a little bit. Um, today, a lot of people ask me, they say, when did you have your near-death experience? I say 2006. They say, when did your book come out? Uh, or when did Wayne Dyer discover your story? I say 2011. And they say, how come it took five years between the time you, um, that you had the NDE and the time Wayne discovered your story, what was going on during that five years? Now, during that five years, I was preparing for what was to come, but I didn't realize I was pre preparing it. You can only tell this when you look back. And at that time, I still went through a few hurdles. 
Um, we went through financial hur hurdles trying to figure out, okay, we've got this new lease of life, but what are we going to do to, um, to earn a living? Because we didn't want to go back into the same ways that we used to earn a living before. It just didn't feel authentic anymore. And so there were different things we were juggling with and working out. And if literally, if Wayne discovered my story as soon as it happened, um, and if uh, the book came out literally after it happened, it would have been way too much for me. So today, it, it feels like a very gradual process and it feels really natural. But if someone was to discover my story today and see where my life is today compared to where it was then, they would say, oh my God, that is incredible. You, they actually say to me, you are so powerful. I don't feel powerful. I feel like it's a natural, just a natural progression of this path. So when people are afraid of their own power, they are seeing a version of it, but that's not how it happens. Drop the fear of being yourself. Don't even think about power. And this is the thing for me. I didn't even think about power. Previously, I would have been afraid of my power. After the NDE, I don't even think of myself as powerful. I don't think of it at all. Other people may come and tell me that because when they look back at the trajectory of my life, or sometimes I look back and I go, holy moly, I did, I did this. And who would have thought 10 years ago, I never would have thought I would be doing what I'm doing today. Even less 15 years ago, I, I was a completely different person. But it wasn't that I wasn't afraid to step into my power. It was that I stopped thinking of my own power and stepped into just being myself. Be yourself fearlessly. That's all. That's all you have to do. And the universe will give you whatever you are ready for and at the rate that you're ready to receive it. So thank you for that great question, Limonada. And do we have any more? We do have another question. I'm going to try and actually pop it up on the screen for okay. everybody. Let's see if technology wants to cooperate with me today. No, technology does not want to oh, cooperate. Oh, what about yes, this? It yes, it does. Judy. Hi, Judy. I remember you from the 1440 event. How do you deal with infidelity? That's um, So I have mixed emotions with that one. I think because um, uh, I know that for me, infidelity would be, I guess, a, a, a big one. So I have mixed emotions because uh, if somebody can get past it, I don't want to um, sway you from that. But let's see if we can uh, attack this or, or unwrap this or unpack it in a more pragmatic way. So there are people who may feel that they were not present in their relationship and can completely understand why their partner was unfaithful to them. And so if both parties are willing to take responsibility and are willing to start afresh and make it a go, then I, I do believe it definitely can work. So if it were me, so if I were to put myself in this situation, um, here are the things I would look for. Number one, I would ask myself, do I feel that I, um, and I would have to be really honest in that, do I feel that I was not present for my partner and that's why they lost interest or they moved on or they needed something fulfilled from someone else? Did, do I feel that, uh, did I lose interest? Did I get involved in something else? Did I put my partner on the back burner? Was I not present for them? Was I traveling too much? Whatever. So I would kind of, I would want to have that dialogue with my partner because what I would want to do is establish that I can take responsibility for my part of it so that I don't feel that I was exploited. And this is very important. I would need to feel that my partner didn't um, exploit me while I was in love with them, present for them, and yet they chose to seek someone else. I would need to determine that. Like, did I have a part in it or did they actually go and do something that um, when I was like um, totally in love with them. So I would want to know that. And that would kind of play a big part of it. If it turns out that I can accept 
uh, responsibility for my part in the relationship drifting apart, then there's a huge chance that it can work. But then the second piece of it for it to work is that both partners have to commit that they're going to make a go of it. They really do. And the one who committed the infidelity has to commit that they are not going to have a relationship or even a friendship of any kind with the person who they committed it with. Um, now this, I'm not saying these as blanket rules for all of you. I'm just saying that's, that would be mine. This is me. This is me personally. I would be willing to make a go of it if they were truly committed to me. And if, and then as we progress in the relationship, I would check in with myself that, okay, does this feel good? Do I trust him again? And, and I would be much more likely to trust him again if in the, when it was committed that I felt I too had driven him away. So basically the question is, did you drive them away? Do you feel that? Or if you didn't, then it would be, for me, it would be harder to commit again. So that's basically my answer. But it is definitely possible if you take responsibility and if they are willing to make a fresh start with you and commit to you and commit on terms that you both agree on. So thanks, Judy, for that question. Um, any more questions? It's good. We have some great questions today. I have one more question lined up for you. Right. And I'm going to try and put it up on the screen again, and I'll even speak it just in case. Okay. This technology gets better and better. Indeed it does. <sighs> Suda says, Hi, Anita. I feel I'm good for nothing because I don't have a job. How will I solve this fear and this insecurity? So this is an interesting one um, because... Um, the job doesn't define you. It's not who you are. And what that question tells me about you, Sudha, and first of all, I'm, I feel for you, if you feel fear and insecurity about yourself, um, I, it's, I'm guessing actually, it's probably a financial insecurity. Can I trouble you to read that out again? I just, sometimes I like to see what's between the lines because the person is not in front of me. So this says, hi, Anita, I feel I am good for nothing because I don't have a job. How yeah. will I solve this fear and insecurity? Yes. So the part that got me is that I feel that I am good for nothing because that says more than just financial uh, insecurity. It's more like you feel like a loser. And what I want you to know is that your job or your work does not define you. It does not define you. Um, you have to define yourself outside of that. My sense also is that you're someone who's quite sensitive and a sensitive person is someone who is more creative and creative people by nature find it harder to find work or to make money from their creativity. And they find it harder to hold jobs that don't nurture their creativity. So um, I'm sensing that that probably describes you. So the first thing I would ask you to do is be kind to yourself. Stop judging yourself. Um, give yourself a nice big hug. And I mean that whether you're male or female, do that. If you're feeling this way, just give yourself a nice big hug and, um, and, and stop judging yourself for not having a job because there are many reasons. The second thing is get into a space of creativity. The universe is asking you to be creative, find a time or space to be quiet and on your own, go out in nature, listen to music, meditate and ask, what am I put on this planet to do? Who am I? Who am I supposed to be? Because the most creative people today are actually creating their own businesses. Maybe you are not somebody who is um, designed to go out and work a job and just be a cog in a, in a big machine, uh, in a big corporate machine. Um, and, and you are someone who's designed to be more creative. And I actually think that we are in the perfect age and the perfect era to start our own businesses from uh, on the internet of any kind, whether it's um, some kind of 
uh, service or product or art or it, because this is a time like no other time to actually earn your money online. And if you just identify what is my passion, what is my passion? And then if you can't find a job following your passion, start it on your own, do it online. There are so many resources. There are so many courses that help you do that. I always encourage people to be independent because then you don't have to follow a boss and you don't have to be judged by someone and you don't have targets. That's what we do. Danny and I are extremely independent in our business and what we do in earning our money um, because we have developed it and even though I, I do everything I do from a passion, it has become my life's work and it also brings us an income so that we can continue to do what we do and we continue to put money into what we're doing so we can keep improving it and keep bringing new technology or improving it by utilizing new technology. So um, I actually implore people who can't get jobs to do this and to please explore it and make this a more creative world instead of becoming a cog in a, in a corporate, in a corporation. So maybe this is your opportunity to do something like that. Truly. Um, I always am browsing online for things like whether it's courses, creative products, stuff like that. So, um, so I think that's a great question. So now speaking of that, speaking of online and things like that, um, I want to actually speak about our next project. Next week I will have a Facebook Live, but during August we are going to be taking a hiatus. We're going to be taking a little break from the weekly lives just for the month of August because we have some exciting new things coming along. Um, I am also doing, working on the final phase, or actually maybe not even the final phase, of my book, which is coming out next year. My book, which focuses on being an empath and on sensitivity. Um, the, I'm sorry the process has been so long because I have been busy and also the, um, the publishers also always make their editions and then they kick it back and they want you to make changes. So anyway, so I will be hunkering down, making a lot of the changes in my book so that it can go in for publishing. Um, and I'm really excited about that book. But the other project that I'm super excited about is I have been doing a lot of online stuff, including online courses, which you can check out on my site and we'll post the link here. But we are developing an online platform. And so I know many of you have shown interest in when I have spoken about opening healing sanctuaries. Now it is, um, not the easiest thing to open a real physical brick and mortar sanctuary because not only do you need funding, but you need government approval and you need administration and there's a whole lot involved. So what we've decided to do in the interim is we've decided to open an online platform which will encompass, uh, which is basically based on my idea of the healing sanctuary, but it is, it will encompass physical healing, but that's not the only thing. We will, the, the, the platform will be offering uh, webinars where I will come online and interact with you guys. It will offer a community section where you can interact with each other. We will have breakout sessions where people can interact with each other. We will have courses, videos, all kinds of things on this platform. And that's what we will be spending the whole month of August developing. And I'm really excited for you guys to be part of it when it's launched. Um, there will be a small membership fee for it, but we will try and keep it as minimal as possible to keep people engaged. And um, the, the thing I'm excited about with the platform is that it will, when I say healing, it's not just physical healing. That'll be just one section of it. Um, there, it will, because in order for you, I mean, the reason why you have physical um, ailments or physical conditions or disease is because other parts of your life aren't working. And those parts of your life contribute to the stresses or the anger or the fear or whatever it is, the feelings of loneliness and the various reasons that contribute towards illness. And so this platform is also for 
people who are going through um, other issues. So we will be speaking about, um, about why it's so hard for people who are empathic, empaths, to make money or to earn money. And to, um, so we'll be addressing things like that. We will be speaking about relationships. We will be speaking a lot about self-love. Um, and we will be speaking about healing disease and how to charge your batteries, how to increase your energy. All these topics will be covered um, over a period of time, which you will have access to 24 seven. So I am so excited about developing this platform, um, which will help to bridge the gap before we get actual brick and mortar, um, brick and mortar facilities. And on this platform, we will also have things like um, access or information on people who can help you, like whether it's with healing or people who um, can guide you or advise you with different areas or whether it's grief counseling, healing, different things. So there will be um, a lot of things. I will be bringing in other teachers and speakers to come and speak and address different things. Uh, so I am so excited about that platform. And if you want to know more information about it, please, please subscribe to my newsletter. Um, we will moving forward during the month of August when I don't have the Facebook live videos, we will be writing more about the development of this in the newsletter. So if you are interested in learning more, if you are interested um, in, in being part of it in some way or whatever it is, please subscribe to my newsletter. So that's on my website, anitamurjani.com. Please subscribe to my newsletter. Now the Facebook lives will be returning in September. Um, they will still be free. They will still be returning in September. But what I want to say is that we are also going to spend that time in upping our technology and what we are hoping to be able to do at that point is to also broadcast it live on YouTube at the same time, because many, many people who watch these videos later on YouTube, they, um, they would love to have me speak live on YouTube and they are not Facebook followers. So, um, so we will be broadcasting it simultaneously live on YouTube and Facebook. So that's what you have to look forward to in September. So I so appreciate you watching this video. Thank you so much for, um, for following me, for your love. Danny thanks you for his love. And I am, I'm sure in September, I'm going to we're going to, we, not just me, we, all of us are going to be able to convince him to come up in front of the camera more because one of the things I want to also include on my platform is tips for people, particularly empaths and so on. When you are trying to earn your own money, maybe he can even sometimes offer his really, really cool techie tips as well. So there's so many areas that we can go into and I can't wait. But in the meantime, I'm going to be seeing you next week. So until then, have a wonderful week and see you then. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in to my video. And if you really enjoyed it, I would love for you to subscribe. And the subscribe button is here. And also, I would love for you to watch my suggested video, which is over here. And if you love my content, please feel free to share it to people who you think that would benefit from it. Thank you.